Greetings, and welcome to something slightly different, but yet not entirely different, because it is the same. What I mean by that is this is a video featuring a piece of computer hardware that we're going to take a look at today, sent to me by a company, Logitech, in this case. Uh, they sent me their new G502 Proteus Core tunable gaming mouse. Uh, as you can see, it came in a box. I, uh, I took it out of the box. There's your unboxing. Good enough for me. All right, so let's not waste any time. Here is the mouse. It's what it looks like. Uh, it looks like this. Wow, my hands look kind of weird under this very uh, weird lighting. But anyway, uh, it kind of looks a little bit like a Transformers sex toy. The mouse, not my hands. My hands, I don't know, they look like hands. But this is, <laughs> well, it's got angles for days. I guess a lot of gaming mouse devices are sort of looking like this now, but it's always kind of turned me off a little bit that these things just look so outlandish. Uh, mainly because I hadn't used one and I was so used to my previous mouse which was this right here, the Logitech G3. I've used this thing since like 2006, and it's awesome in its simplicity. I mean, it just works, and I am so used to this design, the feel of this thing, it's smooth, it's basic, but it works so well. But uh, then this thing came along, and uh, for whatever reason, Logitech was like, hey, you wanna get a press unit to review? I'm like, yeah, sure, cause you know, that's what DOS gamers do, is take looks at a modern gaming mouse. But whatever, hey, I've got one and I'm grateful. And this thing apparently costs $79.99 US dollars. That's the suggested price at retail. It is an optical mouse, but it apparently uses some sort of new infrared optical sensor that Logitech has come up with that's really awesome. At least and pretty impressive as far as the specs. It's got a range of 200 to 12,000 DPI. Uh, that's an insane dots per inch thing going on there. And it's also got a nice polling rate as well, 125 to 1,000 reports per second. So you get a one millisecond report rate, which is pretty important if you're serious about your gaming or you just want a nice, accurate, smooth mouse. The thing actually weighs 121 grams. That is 4.27 ounces. Although it actually comes with some stuff in the box to change that if you want it to be a little bit more heavy. Uh, well, these are some papers that show you the most basic junk. Whatever, man. No actual useful information there. You may as well just download the manual. But it did come with the, this little kit right here. And these are weights. Each of them are 3.6 grams. And actually, if you take the mouse apart, which is super simple because it's just held in by a magnet, you can actually place them in here and not only change the weight of the mouse, but also the balance. Like if you want it balanced to... Uh, you know, a certain direction or angle just a little bit more than another. For whatever reason, you can do that. I don't use these at all because personally, this thing is a bit heavy anyway, especially compared to uh, my old mouse. But um, at the same time, it actually sort of evens out because my old mouse had one of these, you know, just your typical like rubber cords. This one has one of these like braided, I'm not even sure what material cords. It's a lot lighter. It's nice. I like that cord a lot better, which actually puts a little less stress on the mouse when you're moving it. And that's nice, because mainly what I do with my mouse is edit videos, browse the internet, fart around and stuff on a computer. I don't exactly play it for games all the time, so I just want something that I can kind of not even think about. I just want it to be there and do its freaking job. But yeah, with this thing, there's just so much more going on. For one thing, you've got 11 programmable buttons. Uh, that's kind of absurd. I don't even know what all of them do. I mean, I do, but I only ever use like one of them. And that is the uh, back and forth buttons here, which I use for browsing the internet and other basic kind of things, uh, working with Windows or whatever operating system I'm on. The rest of these control things like DPI, like this is a temporary one here to uh, temporarily lower the DPI. This one will change the DPI on the fly between some settings. And then you have this right here, which switches between three presets that you can completely customize. In fact, everything about this can be customized and we will show the software to do so in a little bit. Uh, yeah, and then you also have this little button right here that allows the mouse wheel to just move freely. And uh, yeah, there's no clicking. So, but if you want, now you have that classic clicky kind of thing, and it's nowhere near as loud as my old one. I mean, just, wow. 
oh yeah, and you have a freaking LED there, which um, I don't care for. It's on right now just because I wanted it on, but actually just turn it off in software, and thankfully you can do that. Before we take a look at the software though, I do want to mention one thing, and that is the shape of the mouse itself. Uh, obviously it's made for right-handed people, so if you're left-handed, you're kind of screwed. Uh, the thumb very clearly is made to go over here. The only other thing that is slightly weird about this, I love the feel of it most of the time, but it, it's taken me a long time to get used to this because of this right-hand side thing going on here. Uh, for whatever reason, my pinky wants to rest right here and my ring finger right here. So I end up kind of grasping it a little strangely and it, it ends up with some fatigue on my pinky. <laughs> and as you can see um, from my old mouse, I actually wore that spot down with my pinky and ring finger on that one. So that I mean, that's just how I naturally hold a mouse. And with this, because of the, uh, the shape of it, this is an ambidextrous mouse. So the shape is really, really basic meant for both hands. With the G502, eh, it's a little bit of a thing, but I'm getting used to it. So while you can run this mouse perfectly fine without any kind of software at all, it would be kind of absurd to do so because it comes with an absurd amount of features. So you just go to the Logitech website, download this Logitech gaming software, and this will let you completely customize your mouse. Like if you want to change any of these buttons to do something else, you totally can. And you actually have three profiles to choose from here. There's a bunch of different things you can do as far as you know, sensitivity, report rate, uh, just all sorts of things, most of which I don't care about because I'm not a hugely hardcore gamer as far as like needing some kind of a setup like this. I appreciate it, I like that it's here, but mostly I just like to have it sort of smooth and simple. I, I do like the fact that you have these profiles, which makes it really easy to switch over into gaming mode. like. Um, I uh, was playing a couple shooters, which uh, we'll play one here in a little bit just to kind of show you how it works in a game. And the other thing that's really cool about this mouse is it actually has surface tuning. Now, it's got a couple presets here for different Logitech mouse pads, but if you want, you can actually customize this to anything. Uh, I use a Corsair MM200 gaming mouse pad, but you know, if you want to, I don't know, let's customize it to the wood on my desk, you, you can tune that. Uh, let's see. All right, so let's just tune it. This is really cool to me. So you place it right here, hold the mouse button down, and start doing things in a figure eight. Speed up a bit, okay, okay. So I think this is really cool and it actually does make a noticeable difference. So um, yeah, this sensor and stuff that it has in here combined with this software, this is really impressive, and I have noticed much better performance as a result. Let's see how, this is how it was. Okay, yeah, now that honestly does, it feels more one-to-one -one with the way my hand is moving, the mouse. This is really cool. Uh, the rest of the stuff in here, I mean, you can do like macros, and these are your options for like uh, that stupid light that's on the mouse, you know, you can turn it off entirely. Uh, angle snapping, I don't even know what it does. Oh, here we go. Angle snapping makes it easier to move the mouse cursor in a straight line. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. Wow. All right. Uh, anyway, and you can update, of course, the uh, profiles and um, firmware and all that good stuff. Whatever. Let's go ahead and take a look at a game. Oh, uh, yeah. Time to show this thing in action with some gameplay. We're going to play some Wolfenstein, the old order, since the new order isn't out yet. And you know, it seems appropriate to my channel, because, uh, <laughs> this is what I do. So yes, Wolfenstein 3D with the Proteus G502 gaming mouse. Rah! Make sure that that's good. Yep, it is, because I want to play in the biggest screen possible. I've got a 486, although I'm not playing it on a 486. So let's make sure that the mouse is enabled. Yes, it is. Ah, yes, sensitivity settings. <laughs> 12,000 DPI. Uh, that's totally not what this is doing, but that's okay. Let's put it all the way up. And, um, yeah, so we got three buttons. Woo! Really making use of all 11 of those on this mouse. I'm so glad we're using this thing with Wolf 3D because I can think of no better way to do it. I am Death Incarnate. Man, I hope the new game has those difficulty levels as well. I'm getting psyched. Okay. Ooh, my goodness. That's really sensitive. <laughs> um, there we go. All right. 
Where you at? Oh, that's right. No. Die. Stupid Nazis. Killing them with ad lib sound effects. Well, actually, it's like sound blaster sound effects with uh, a few ad lib things thrown in. Okay. Anyway, the mouse. Uh, how does it work? Well, I think it works wonderfully in Wolf 3D or otherwise. It's really quite nice. I like the way the buttons feel. They click. Uh, that's good. They should click. <laughs> the mouse wheel. I'm actually really impressed with the mouse wheel. Uh, it, it takes a little bit of getting used to because of it has that tilting left and right thing going on, and I've never had a mouse with that. I kind of don't like it. I wish you could turn that off. But I do like the fact that you can switch between the smooth scrolling and the clicky scrolling. That's a really cool feature. Um, but yeah, the whole feel of the mouse, once I'm getting used to uh, holding it differently, mainly because of that weird pinky ring finger thing. Here, let's let's aim with the mouse and then do with the keyboard. That's a little better. <laughs> All right. That's controlling the entire game with a mouse is a little absurd. But yeah. I mean, I've used this other mouse that I've had, the, the same basic design for something like 15 years, 14 years, I don't know, something like that. So obviously, it takes a lot of getting used to, and, um, well, that's to be expected. Otherwise, though, I'm really impressed with his mouse, and I would very much recommend it. $80? Sure. I mean, I would prefer it to be a little bit less, but, you know, you do use a mouse every single day, and... I'm kind of in the mind that, you know, things that you use every day are worth investing some money into, uh, as long as they're good. And to me, this is very good. So if you uh, like the way that this sounds, <laughs> and maybe um, some of the features and stuff, uh, it's it's pretty freaking sweet. Uh, go to a local store, maybe, and um, see if they have one on display. Maybe you can try it out before buying, because... Like I said, the, the feel of it is a little bit weird, and if you're a lefty, uh, it might be a, not so good, but... Hey, there you go. Find it in a store, try it out, go online and get a better deal, because I'm sure there's going to be better deals eventually. Let's see if we can get through this level. Freaking Nazis. Nazis everywhere. That's a tree. Die! I'm going to stab the crap out of that tree. Stab the crap out of this Nazi. I'm really looking forward to the new Wolfenstein. Oh, I'm dead! Because of stuff like that. <laughs> I was just playing through Wolfenstein 2009. I finally uh, beat it, actually. I was I was super impressed with that, so I am psyched to see where the new one goes. And I am going to be playing it with my G502 mouse. So thanks again, Logitech, for sending a DOS gamer a uh, new mouse. I mean, it works in DOSBox, so I'm cool with that. Wish I could plug it into my uh, 386 SX16 computer by NCR, but alas, I cannot. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, don't buy this mouse, because it's completely useless for your 386 with only serial and parallel ports. Uh, just, just don't. It, there's no reason to get this thing at all. And if you'd like to see more videos on computer hardware that discriminates against old-school gamers with really, really outdated tech, then why not click some of this stuff, because I do more of them every week. You can subscribe if you give that much of a crap. And you can check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and out back behind several random stores in a parking lot doing shady deals out of someone's trunk buying retro games. And as always, thank you for watching.